Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the final figure to be released for Wave 4, the Transformers Studio Series Starscream from Revenge of the Fallen. As always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging and then we'll take a detailed look at Starscream himself. Turning very quickly to Starscream's packaging, as you can see, we have a really nice CG render of Starscream from Revenge of the Fallen. It states that he is Studio Series Starscream. The side of the packaging has a larger image of Starscream looking really, really menacing. And the back of the packaging showcases the figure in both the robot mode, the vehicle mode, how many steps he transforms from and that he is a fully licensed Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. It also states that he has a backdrop included as well as some of the other figures in the assortment. His bio reads, Starscream weeds through the trees in pursuit of Sandwood Wiki and the Cybertronian secrets locked inside his mind. The final side of the packaging has a large image of Starscream's head which is extremely detailed, states that he's from the Studio Series and that he is from the Voyager class assortment. As with all of the Studio Series figures, Starscream does include a backdrop. This time it is from the forest fight from Revenge of the Fallen. This is the exact same backdrop that we got with Megatron and Optimus Prime and it's really nice to finally have another figure from the iconic movie scene. As always you can insert the figure into the backdrop for a more dynamic display option however I just tend to leave these backdrops in their packaging. And here we have Studio Series Revenge of the Fallen Starscream out of his packaging. Now this is a direct repaint of the Wave 1 Voyager class Starscream that we got for the first movie however this time instead of being given the missile launchers he now has his iconic blade weapon that he used in Revenge of the Fallen as well as Dark of the Moon and he has his symbolic Cybertron tattoos that the movie verse Starscream has become renowned for. Personally I'm a massive fan of this colour scheme and I really wish that Hasbro would have just given us this figure from the start. I really do prefer Starscream with the alien tattoos. It was his more iconic look from the movies and I just really really like the detailing on these tattoos. Taking a detailed look at Starscream's head as you can see the plastic colouring is this kind of beigey colour. It's a lot darker of a colour than the first movie version. You've got some black tattoos highlighting the crest of the head as well as a very precisely painted on or stamped on Decepticon insignia. Something which which was missing on the first movie version. As you can see, the whole mouthpiece has been done in a black and gold paint, as well as a gold paint application in the center of his forehead. He has got really nicely sculpted and painted red eyes, which look really accurate to how he looked in the movie. Turning to the cockpit of the figure, as you can see, you've got the translucent orange cockpit, as well as some of those more Cybertronian details. Even some of the torso areas, such as the triangular sections underneath his arms, have been picked out in a really nice kind of gold paint application with a black underneath to break up the sculpt. The wings of Starscream 2 have got some really nice so Cybertronian detailing on them. And the arms are fairly basic. As you can see, they are mostly a mixture of different colored plastics. You've got a lighter, more gray plastic and then a darker black plastic. You've also got some gold paint application on the forearms and the hands have just been done in a plain dark gray plastic. Moving down to the torso section, it is fairly basic. As you can see, the crutch area has just got a few additional black paint applications. One of his fires does have a Cybertronian tattoo implemented on it and even turning the figure around to the side, as you can see, there are more Cybertronian detailings on this side of his leg. The other leg is fairly basic. However, that was accurate to the movie. Overall for detailing, this figure is really, really good. Turning very quickly to articulation, it is exactly the same as the first movie Starscream. He does just have a swivel joint at the head. The arms are on a variety of joints. So you've got this joint here, which can make him move underarm. You've got this hinge joint here, which allows the arms to move all the way outwards, as well as down. He can also move his arms 360 degrees. There's also a rotation joint just below this section, as well as a double jointed joint there mainly due to transformation, but you can definitely use that for posability. And finally, the hands are on ball joints, so you can maneuver them in a variety of different poses. There is no waist articulation, however, the figure can kick his legs forward that far, as well as back that far. They can also hinge out to the sides about that much. He has multiple hinge joints at his lower legs, so you've got this joint here, as well as this joint here, also as well as a swivel joint there. So overall for articulation, he is completely packed with it. Starscream comes with one additional accessory, that being his buzzsaw. It's really intricately detailed, as you can see there are some nice detailing as well as some paint applications on it. And the blade itself is of a translucent orange, very reminiscent of Starscream's cockpit, and it does freely spin also. The integration is exactly the same as the first movie Starscream, in the sense that you essentially take one of the hands and fold it back as if though you were going to transform him, and then just take the blade and plug it in just like so. And there you have Starscream equi equipped with his really awesome looking buzzsaw accessory. For a quick Studio Series size comparison, here is the Voyager class Starscream next to the Voyager class Megatron, Deluxe class Dropkick and Voyager class Octopus Prime. As you can see, he's on the larger side of the Voyagers. He is just roughly just the same height as Megatron. As you can see, he completely towers over Deluxe class Dropkick and he is considerably taller than the Voyager class Optimus Prime. So overall for scale, I do think that it is really, really good. Now that we now have a Revenge of the Fallen Voyager class Starscream, we can almost recreate that iconic forest fire. All we need now is a remold of the leader class Blackout to give us a leader class grindor.
So there you have my look of at Studio Series Starscream in his robot mode. Now I'm not going to showcase the transformation in this video as I have transformed this figure on the first release which can also be found in my Studio Series playlist. So if you wish to see the transformation, just check out that video. So we're going to go from the robot mode looking like this to looking like this. Now here we have Starscream in his F21 or F22 Raptor Jet alt mode. Now this paint scheme really looks amazing in this particular mode. It looked really good in the robot mode but upon transforming this figure I think that this may actually be my preferred mode for this particular repaint. As you can see the tribal tattoos have been scattered all the way throughout the jet mode which looks really accurate. As you see you've got some Decepticon insignias as well as some Cybertronian tattoos and overall it just looks like a really nice detailed looking jet. The underside hasn't got that much kibble on the bottom of it as you can see. You could probably make out that it was a transformer However, it's definitely not as obtrusive as some of the older Starscream figures. It just looks like a really, really nice looking jet. And I really like the contrast between the translucent orange plastic and this whole black section just behind it. It looks really good. It still does have landing gear. You simply deploy that by just pulling that out like so. And on this side. And you can prop the figure down just like this. Turning very quickly to weapon storage is exactly the same as the first version. As you can see under here, you do have some tabs here and here that will just plug into these slots on the buzzsaw. So just line these up, pick the buzzsaw in, and there is your weapon storage for Studio Series Starscream. For a quick Studio Series size comparison, here is the first movie Starscream in his Raptor mode, and here is the second movie Starscream. As you can see, the paint differences really shine in this mode. This was definitely a more cleaner and more traditional looking jet, whereas this was more of a Michael Bay, Revenge of the Fallen styled Starscream, and definitely my preference. This is a really nice jet also, and definitely does look like a more realistic and standard alt mode. So perhaps collectors would keep this in its jet mode and keep this one in its robot mode. But personally, I think both of these figures are worth the pickup. The color scheme on this one was really good, and it is the original version of movie Starscream, but the color scheme on this one is the more traditionally seen version of Starscream. So both both of the figures are really good in their own rights. For a final comparison, here are both of the accessories that come with the individual figures. This is the one that comes on the new Revenge of the Fallen Starscream, and this is the one that comes in the first movie Starscream. Now this missile launch here was a weapon that Starscream used in all of the movies. I do believe that the Revenge of the Fallen buzzsaw was only seen in the second and third movie, so this is a more commonly seen and more traditional accessory for Starscream, but personally I just like the overall look of the buzzsaw. So there you have it, my review on the Transformers Studio series Revenge of the Fallen Voyager class Starscream. Personally, if you haven't already picked up the first version of this figure, then you definitely need to get this version. Personally, I think that the new tattoos and the new paint scheme really make this figure excel and it makes it look better than the first version, which was already near enough perfect. I really do like the way the tattoos have been applied on. They're extremely precise and very pristine. There are no quality issues on the figure whatsoever. All the joints seem extremely tight, so there's no evidence of mold degradation on this figure. The new buzzsaw accessory is also really cool. Personally, I do prefer it over the original initial missile launcher. And overall, it's just a really nice looking figure. The transformation is pretty decent as well, and the jet mode looks really, really good. Overall, I highly recommend this figure. Now, this probably will be my last Judo series review for quite some time. I believe that Wave 5 isn't destined to come out until January of 2019. However, we may see it earlier, like we have done with some of these waves. However, that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop producing content. I have got a lot more Transformers reviews coming up, some of the new Siege figures, as well as the movie masterpiece Ironhide. And also check out my reviews of the Studio Series Dropkick, as well as the Studio Series KSI Century. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, please let me know down in the comment section below. And until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.